Well, good day, everybody. I just managed to come back in and uh, sit down here in front of the computer and see if I can answer some uh, some of the emails, check and see what the uh, YouTube channel is doing, and uh, probably answer some of the comments that we get through there. But I have heard that some of them are not very polite, and people telling me to stick to the hunting clerk, stay away from all this stupid political stuff. Well, I think those people have got one heck of a shock coming to them because what we have seen here is that the politics is driving our everyday life. The politics are what is causing us to look ahead and say that one day within 10, 20 years, maybe we won't be allowed to hunt. We won't be allowed to own firearms at all. It could be that close. Some people say it'll never happen, while others say we're very, very close to having it happen. So it's all driven by legislation, by politics, uh, by whoever's in power. And unfortunately here in Queensland, Australia, we have had a left-leaning government in power for, you know, probably two dozen years. Uh, I think it's 25 out of the last 32 years. What I'd like to do here is uh, give you a few more details of how the the legislation affecting our hunting in this in this country is affected very similar to what we're seeing with this pandemic. If we draw the parallels, maybe you can see why someone like myself has got to put his foot in the water a little bit and say, hey guys, wake up, have a look what's happening, because if you don't, it's going to be too late, right? because I want this to last. I want my grandkids' grandkids to be able to do the things that I've done in the past for generation after generation. That could all be lost if people like you don't stop and listen and have a look at the legislation. And if you do, maybe you'll wake up and say, hey, this isn't as good as what it looks. Let's do something about it. So righto, let's look at biosecurity. Now, I'd like to say I'm right in favour of strong biosecurity in this country. Without strict quarantine and without strong laws governing us in that area, our primary production would soon be overrun by some insect or disease, uh, parasite, blight that would come in and destroy our way of life. It's, uh, it's come close to happening many times. And uh, by and large, these guys and gals of biosecurity do a fantastic job of keeping our primary production alive. Now, first of all, under biosecurity, we've all got what is known as a GBO. So if somebody tells you you've got BO, it means you've got a biosecurity obligation, a general biosecurity obligation. Now that covers every man, woman and child in this country. If we look at the primary production angle for a start, Every property is run now under what is called a PIC, a Property Identification Code. Now let's start with a look at our sugarcane industry. Quite some years ago, they brought in a, a best practice, a quality assurance program for the sugarcane industry. There was concerns about runoff, sediment running off and, and killing the Great Barrier Reef and other issues. So they brought in a QR, a uh, best practice system, and they ask people to voluntarily get involved and improve the way that they produce their sugarcane. Now, after some years, there was actually quite a bit of concern there because there was only about 11% of cane growers that actually had participated, had come across, because most of them saw that it was too onerous and that they were required to give across a lot of their personal information, their secrets of how they grew the best cane in the area. And so this was going to be then public knowledge, everything about what they did. So there was a lot of pushback. So what we heard then, that because there wasn't enough uptake of the system, that it was required to be made mandatory. So really, the, it begs the question then, were they ever wanting it to be voluntary? I think right from day one, they wanted it to be mandatory. They wanted everybody involved, but they were trying to go with the soft shoe approach and get everybody to actually come in on a voluntary basis. Now, what we saw in the sugarcane industry 
has also happened in the cattle and the sheep industries, and it is happening with everybody in our everyday lives right across the globe. Now let's just talk about cattle because they are the predominant species, livestock species across most of our wild deer and wild pig areas of Queensland. Now in this country, there's been a magnificent scheme put together called the NLIS, the National Livestock Identification System. Now this system has been designed to track every stock animal from time of birth to time of death, or if that's when it ends up on your dinner table. Now, those people that aren't used to handling livestock probably won't realise that every beast in this country now that is traded is supposed to have an ear tag with a microchip in it. And this is a particular uh, identifying number that stays with that beast right from paddock to plate. Now, each Cattle beast, when it's ready for market, needs to be tracked under what is called the National Vendor Declaration System, the NVD. Now, a few years ago, a system was brought in called the LPA, the Livestock Production Assurance System. This system combines the NVD and the NLIS under each individual pick number. Right, so you've got PIC, NVD, NLIS, all under LPA. And as it stands now, you can't get a national vendor declaration unless you are part of LPA. Okay, now the next is JBAS, J-B-A-S. That's Yoni's Disease Beef Assurance Score. Now, right, we've got this disease in this country, Yoni's, which is uh, bovine paratuberculosis. It's similar to a chronic wasting disease you see in other areas, and it's something that can affect the uh, livestock production industry severely over here. Although most old timers will say that it has been with us for hundreds of years, and in most areas doesn't cause a problem. But whether we like it or not, it's been earmarked as the disease that needs to be eradicated out of our livestock herds. So landowners are judged on a system from zero to eight on the JBAS score. So basically what it means is if you've got a mob of cattle uh, and you get underneath the LPA system, that allows you to get an NVD, a national vendor declaration, so you can transport your cattle. To transport your cattle, they've all got to be under the NLIS system. So they've all got to be uh, chipped, registered, on that system. Now it's a voluntary system. However, if you don't uh, belong to the LPA, if you don't, uh, if you're not a part of it, then most processors won't take your animals. Okay, so it's voluntary, but you can voluntarily then leave your livestock in the paddock and don't sell them. As a um, as one of their auditors said to me a while back there, they said if you don't comply, you don't compete. Okay, so it's, it's, it's pretty uh, solid stuff, especially when you're a landowner that's got a couple of thousand head of cattle. Um, if you suddenly see your animals drop from, say, a level six or seven down to a level two or four because you've had Yoni's disease identified in your herd, that's a huge loss for you when it comes to sale time. Now, if you want to go and buy some cattle off somebody else, and you go and have a look at those cattle, they look great. You think, right, I'll have them in on my uh, herd here. And then you realize that they are only a level, say, two, and you're a level six or seven. Then, by rights, you must quarantine those animals, blood test them before you can enter them into your system, into your herd. That comes at a cost. So if you're buying them off somebody else, you'll pay less for those cattle that are a lower JBAS score. That's basically how it works. So it's in the best interest of landowners to be involved in this, in this system. So I'll get it clear, it's not compulsory, it's not mandatory, but if you don't comply, you don't compete. Now let's look at the parallels across here. A pick number that is on a uh, rural property, your property identification code, 
that is similar to your principal place of residence that appears on your driver's license, on your gun license, or on your Medicare card. National Vendor Declaration and NLIS, we don't have to look any further than the QR system that was there for a system that was grabbing all your details of who you are and where you went. LPA, that is what we're seeing coming in with a digital identity, is basically the LPA system. Uh, on the JBAS score, that will come down to whether you've had one shot, two shot, booster, third, four shot, fifth shot, and so on. That will be your social score. The parallels are nearly exactly the same. So if anybody is still wondering why there's millions of people rising up around the world, don't look any further than this. The exact blueprint for what's happening to everyday citizens has already been tried and tested on the rural industries and has got a stranglehold there. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. We've got to protect our primary industries, but what we're seeing is overreach. We're seeing it going too far. That's the problem with most things we see in society, uh, to me, justice is a balance between rights and responsibilities. You'll see the scales of justice, they need to be balanced. But what we're seeing now, it's very heavy handed. It's very much the wrong way. So people say, how does that relate to our hunting? And to me, it's a no brainer. And I'm surprised that more people can't see the long-term repercussions of what's happening. If we don't have the right to say what goes into our body and what doesn't go into our body, if we don't have the right to do the things that we used to do as, as a uh, part of our everyday lives because of a government mandate or decree, how the heck do you think that you're going to keep a gun license and keep being able to go out with a firearm into the bush and shoot something. If you can't see the walls closing in on us, then I'm sorry for you because I can see it. And what I'm trying to do is say to people, wake up, we're going to be caught in a trap here. The time to do something is now.